It's time to make it. Just give it a try. Cause you can make it like the old fat guy. Welcome to another edition of You Can Make It. I'm David Farrell, and today I'm going to be making a great appetizer for you. But this particular appetizer, while it's good for friends if they come over or anytime you're entertaining, I find when it's really nice is when it's just you and the person you love sitting around with a glass of wine in the evening. This is an appetizer that, I don't know, just the lusciousness of it makes me want to spend time with people who are close to me. So what I'm going to be making today are shrimp skewers louis. These are just shrimp cooked with a nice sauce and they're put on a little skewer so they're easy to eat. There's no difficulty at all making these but they are so nice they even look fancy. So we're going to start by making a louis sauce. Now my basic louis sauce has 75 milliliters of mayonnaise, 35 milliliters of chili sauce, 2 milliliters of Worcester sauce, and one milliliter of hot pepper sauce in this cup. I'm just going to put that in my bowl here. And we want to put a few seasonings in with it. And the seasonings are really basic. What I have here are one milliliter each of onion powder, garlic powder, Italian seasoning blend, and prepared horseradish. So I'm just going to put those in with these ingredients. Other thing that is a major feature of Louis sauce is lemon. You want to put in about two milliliters of lemon peel, but just the yellow zest part. So just scrape some of the zest off of a lemon skin, just like that, until you got Two milliliters are about half a teaspoon. And then you want about a teaspoon or five milliliters of lemon juice. There we go, that's exactly five milliliters, trust me. And then you just want to mix this up. all nice and pink and even like that you finish mixing it but because it's got things in it like lemon zest and the horseradish that takes time to work its way through the sauce so it should really be put in the fridge overnight just put some cellophane over it and put it in the fridge so the flavors can blend through it but don't worry I've got some I made yesterday for continuing on with the recipe so I'll just put this aside and we'll put it in the fridge in a minute once you've made your sauce you have to get your prawns ready. Now, you can use shrimp or prawns. I don't know what the difference are. Some people say prawns are bigger, but I've seen people say sh shrimp that big or still shrimp. Whatever it is, you want some medium-sized prawns. I've already put some on a skewer, but I'll show you how I did it. I took some shrimp, and you'll see I got ones that are already sliced down the back, because that makes the vein already is taken out of it, and they're so much easier to peel. You just want to pull the shell off all the way down the back and then when you get to the bottom for this recipe you want to pull it out of the tail. And We're just going to do that with a total of 12 prawns. I've already done nine of them. Make sure you get all the shell off and pull it out. The last one. And pull it out. So you've got three prawns already veined with no shell on them. And now you're looking for about an eight inch bamboo skewer. I used four of them because I'm going to put three on each skewer. So just take the prawn, hold it like that so the thick part's down, and push the skewer through it and push it up until you've just left a couple of inches at the top and do the same thing with the second one just leave a couple of inches between them and then put one right on the bottom 
without pushing it up any, just so it stays at the bottom. So you want four skewers just like that, and those are ready to be cooked now, so I just have to get my frying pan out and we'll cook our shrimp. I've heated my fry pan up to 350 degrees, which is medium high. You could also do this on a medium high barbecue if it's the middle of summer, but there's different times of year you might not be able to get outside. I actually prefer this one in a fry pan anyway. So I'm just going to put 15 milliliters of butter into the pan and let it melt. Now what you want to look for is for it to be melted and bubbly all over because that's when you know the fat's hot enough to start cooking the prawns. So just get it spread around. There we go. Now, see it's all nice and bubbly? We're just going to put the skewers into the pan. And the thing about shrimp is it's very easy to overcook. It only takes a couple of minutes aside. You're just looking for it to get translucent, that, that sort of pinky color with just a little opaque. So we'll just let them sit for a couple of minutes aside here. Now, if you were doing this for an evening with your loved one like I like to do, you could have all the shrimp on the skewers in advance, in the fridge, the sauce all made up, so the only thing you'd have to do that night is cook the shrimp. It's not even bad cold. If you want to cook the shrimp and let it go cold, you can even serve it as a cold dish without any preparation. I like them hot though, so we'll just give these a little cook on both sides. Now, you'll notice as I turn these over, they're a nice pink color, and they're just a little not so see-through, a little more opaque than they were before. So we'll just give them a couple more minutes on this side, and then the prawns will be cooked. The shrimp are cooked now. This is what you want them to look like. Pink, and you see it's nice and white through there, but right now you want to take them off. Another few seconds longer, they'll be overcooked. So just take a skewer off, and go over to your serving plate where you've got the Louis sauce and you just want to use a pair of snips and cut below each shrimp to make individual servings. And just arrange them nicely around the sauce and do that with each skewer. So there you have a pretty plate of shrimp skewers louis. You know what my favorite part is, I say it every show, it's getting to taste it. So I'm now going to try some, the sad part is my sweetheart is in here, I'll have to just suffer through and try it myself. So just take it, dip it in the sauce, remember no double dipping allowed, and have a taste. Mmm. The creaminess of the sauce, touch of spiciness with the rich buttery taste of the shrimp. This is one of the great appetizers of all time and you know what? You can make it. In this recipe David prepared shrimp louis skewers. The ingredients used are 35 milliliters of chili sauce, 75 milliliters of mayonnaise, 5 milliliters of lemon juice, 2 milliliters of lemon zest, 2 milliliters of Worcestershire sauce, and one milliliter each of onion powder, garlic powder, horseradish, Italian seasoning, and hot pepper sauce. Also, 12 medium shrimp and four skewers. For the complete recipe, visit David's blog at oldfatguy.ca. And remember, you can make it.
It's time to make it Just give it a try Cause you can make it Like the old fat guy Thanks for joining us for this episode of You Can Make It with David Farrell. I'm going to make something I love to make for my wife today because I love her a lot. And it's Italian, and Italian is the language of love, amore. I'm going to be making scallop fettuccine alfredo. It's a wonderful dish. It's got a creamy cheese sauce, succulent scallops, and speaking of which, I have about 20 medium scallops here I'm going to take over to the stovetop and cook up. I have a pot of water boiling for my pasta, but I won't be using that for a second. I have heated up some butter until it's just started to brown a little bit and get a little bit of foam in there. That's 15 millis or a tablespoon of butter. I'm going to take the scallops and just throw them in the pan. They will cook really quickly, just three, four minutes at most, maybe even two minutes. I find the easiest way to tell when scallops are cooked is by the texture. They should just be starting to get a little firm. You really want to stay away from overcooking them or they turn rubbery. I like to keep tossing them in the butter because it coats them and gives them a nice rich flavor. Now you can see how they're just starting to get a little bit solid color and they're starting to flake apart a little bit in a few places. That's a good sign that it's close to being done. But my final test is always, if they're a little rubbery, that one is. So we're just going to give them a minute longer. Okay, now they've just got a touch of firmness. That means they're done. So we'll just set this aside for later. And we'll start by taking our fettuccine. Now I have here 190 grams or about half a box of fettuccine. I'm just going to take that and throw it into my boiling water. And it's going to take 12 to 14 minutes to cook. I've put 60 milliliters of butter into a Dutch oven over medium heat just to get it to melt. Once it's melted, I'm going to be adding some heavy cream to it. You can use whipping cream or heavy cream, depending what they call it in the store where you come from. Now, as soon as the butter is mostly melted, you're going to reduce the heat on the stove to low. So we're just going to turn this down to low because we don't want to scorch our Alfredo sauce, which will have cheese in it. So we're just going to wait for the last of that butter to melt. And we're going to be adding 100 milliliters of heavy cream or whipping cream. Oh, just already it looks so rich. I just love Alfredo sauce. And we're just going to stir them together until you start to see some steam coming off of it. See, this just starting to get some steam coming. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add our cheeses. I'm starting with a classical com combination of Italian cheeses. What we have here is 60 milliliters of grated Parmesan, and here we have 25 milliliters of grated Romano cheese. This is 7 milliliters or 8 milliliters approximately of cream cheese, just gives a nice touch, and here we have 1 milliliter of garlic powder. All of that's going to go in to the pot. Now it's important you stir continuously from this point on. You can take little breaks here and there, but that cheese is going to thicken this up and it's going to melt and if you don't keep stirring, you run the risk of getting scorching and gloppy parts. So just keep stirring it in. I just tested the pasta by tasting a little piece of it and making sure it had just a little bit of bite left. That's called al dente. So I'll be draining that in a second. But first, I'm going to put my scallops back into the sauce. And we'll just stir them in to the sauce. 
and that's just going to sit for a second while we drain our pasta. And then that pasta is going to come back and go into the sauce. And with that, we're just going to stir the pasta in the sauce. And believe it or not, that is pasta alfredo with scallops, or scallop pasta alfredo. I'm just going to take it over to the table and we're going to plate it. Now that we have our fettuccine alfredo all cooked, you just want to put it in a nice serving bowl. And once you've got it in the bowl, a little trick to make it look just a little bit nicer is to take two forks and put them like close to each other like that and twist it. A little bit farther apart would be better. There we go. And just twist it and it just makes the pasta line up a bit better and it gives it a nice bit of height. So there you have scallops fettuccine alfredo. So we're just going to take a little bit off because I need to try some. Uh, although I make it for my wife, this is quality control. You have to make sure, make sure you got a scallop, and a little bit of pasta. Mmm. The rich, luscious pasta, the firmness and great taste of the scallops. And you'll find that if you use the Romano cheese, it's got a real saltiness to it that gives it a great picante, nice salt hit. I love scallop fettuccine alfredo, and the best part of it, of course, is you can make it. In this recipe, David made scallop fettuccine alfredo. The ingredients used were 20 medium scallops, 15 milliliters of butter, 190 grams of fettuccine, 100 milliliters of heavy cream, 60 milliliters of butter, 60 milliliters of grated parmesan, 25 milliliters of grated Romano or Emmental cheese, 8 milliliters of cream cheese, and 1 milliliter of garlic powder. For the complete recipe, visit David's blog at oldfatguy.ca. And as David says, you can make it. It's time to make it. Just give it a try. Cause you can make it like the old fat guy. Thank you for tuning in to this edition of You Can Make It. I'm David Farrell, the old fat guy. Today I'm going to make a great carrot dish. It's called Copper Pennies. Copper Pennies are a side dish that have been around since the beginning of the last century. And the reason they've been around so long is that they are so convenient, they're so easy to make. You can serve them as a cold salad dish on a hot summer day or heat them up and serve them with a roast of beef or any fancy meal you would like. They're also really good for a pot luck because you can serve them cold. It also has a fair amount of vinegar content in it, so once you make them up, they will store for up to three weeks in the refrigerator, which is a handy way if you've got a bunch of carrots to use up to not let them go bad. I started off by taking two pounds or 900 grams of carrots and I just sliced them into little circles. I added half a cup of water and I microwaved them for five minutes. You want them hot and crispy, not cooked through. Now I'm just going to drain the water off of the carrots. Once you've got the water off the carrots, you're going to want to layer in one small green pepper that's been finely diced and one medium onion that's been thinly sliced. And the way I do that is I put about a third of the carrots into my casserole dish. Just layer them out like that. And then put about a third of the green peppers in, sprinkle them over the top, and about a third of the onions, just so they're layered like that. And then I'm just going to repeat that with two more layers. Now that I have them all layered into my casserole dish, I just have to make a brining sauce to put over them. And we're going to go over the stove to do that. 
In this saucepan, I've put 75 milliliters or one third cup salad oil, five milliliters or one teaspoon salt, one milliliter or a quarter teaspoon pepper, five milliliters or one teaspoon Worcester sauce, 175 milliliters or three quarter cup white vinegar, one can of condensed tomato soup, one cup or 250 milliliters of white sugar, and one teaspoon or five milliliters of prepared mustard. And I've just got it over quite high heat and I'm going to stir it together and bring it to a boil. And I'm just going to switch to a whisk so I can get it a little smoother. You can see that it's starting to get bubbles breaking all over the surface and it's a good rolling boil. So I just have to take this now and pour it over my vegetables. Remember I told you this was easy? Well this is now finished. The only thing that has to happen is it's got to sit in the fridge overnight to let the sauce marry to the vegetables. I happen to have some made up so we can taste it today though. I chose to heat up the copper pennies that I made before today because I like them hot. They are really good cold too though. But I have to taste them now just to make sure they're right before I'd serve them to guests or family. So I'm just going to spoon some of it out into a bowl here and do a little quality control tasting. And boy, do they look good. It's, it's such a pretty dish. Mmm. Firm, crunchy carrots with almost a sweet and sour sauce on them. The sugar and the vinegar and the tomato just gives it a great taste. The onion and the green peppers kick up the flavor of the carrots. This is one of my favorite vegetable dishes and you can make it. In this segment, David made copper pennies. The ingredients used were 900 grams of carrots, 125 milliliters of water, one small green pepper, seeded and finely diced, one medium onion, thinly sliced, 75 milliliters of salad oil, five milliliters of salt, one milliliter of pepper, five milliliters of Worcestershire sauce, 175 milliliters of white vinegar, a 284 milliliter can of condensed tomato soup, 250 milliliters of white sugar, and five milliliters of prepared mustard. For the complete recipe, visit David's blog at oldfatguy.ca. And as David says, you can make it.